Okay, so let's create a new SAS file uh, within the components directory. We are going to call it underscore horizontal fit. And this is the file that will contain all of the styling for our widget. We're going to start with horizontal fit class and a background color we're going to set to whatever's associated with the fit BG variable. Then a line height we're going to set to fit height. And then we're going to have overflow, which we want to make sure that it's hidden. So if anything goes outside of this container for any reason, we want it to be hidden. We don't want anything that's inside of the horizontal fit container to be shown outside of it. Okay, then we are going to put header, body, as well as buttons. So we're going to group some styling for them here. Font size. We want to set to one REM. Then we are going to set white space to no wrap. We don't want any text to wrap on a new line. We want all text to be just in one line. If it's longer than, than it can fit within the container, it has to go outside of it. So we don't want wrapping of any kind. Then for all of these elements, plus any potential span tags inside of them, we want to make sure that color is being set to whatever we associated with the feet color. And we may remember that obviously we've associated white color with it. Okay, now outside of this, we are going for header and body now only, without buttons. So header and body, I want to make sure that their padding is top and bottom set to zero, but on the left and right hand side, we have 0 0.8 RE. M. And then just header, I want to make sure that color we have, not columns, color, we have set to fit header color and that background color is set to fit head BG, which contains the color that we want to associate with this header. Okay, next thing will be the body container. So body. And here I'm going to start and I'm just going to create a few new lines so you can see things a little, a little bit better. There we go. We start with the width and the width of the body I want to be set to 100%. Then overflow I want hidden as well because these items within the body may go wider than the body container. So if they go outside of it, I don't want to show it. I want to hide it. Then we go for the position. I want to make sure that it's relative. Then we go for paragraph inside of this body, which will display none by default to make sure that none of these items is displayed. Margin will set to zero. We'll also set padding for all of them to zero. And then the active one, the paragraph with the class active will be displayed. So display block, but all of the other ones display none, only the active will be displayed. Because what's going to happen? When we first load this widget, the first item only will be displayed. So this one with the class active. Then we swipe this cover with the background color on top of it. We swap the paragraph. So we remove the class active from the active paragraph and move it to the next one. Then we reveal this new paragraph. So basically sliding this cover to the back to the right. So only the one with the active class will be visible. Then we go for the anchor tag within this paragraph. And I want to make sure that the color of this anchor tag is whatever we associated with feet, uh, anchor color. Okay, and now we're going to play with this cover. So whatever cover element we have inside of this body, if we open our index.html, if you look at the body. So you have body, within the div we have all of the items, these paragraphs, and then we have this cover. Okay, and this is why uh, we actually specified position here for the body as relative. I'm going to collapse this paragraph so we have a little bit more space. And, and now I'm going to say cover, and for cover, what I would like to have is to have a width of only 1.2 REM. 
by default. So it sits on the right hand side. It's not quite invisible. It takes a little bit of a space, this 1.2 REM, but it doesn't fill in the whole body because otherwise it would cover obviously the content of it. Then height, I would like to have at 100%. I would like to have text aligned to the left. And then Z index, I'd like to set to 10. So it's actually overlapping the content of the body, whatever is, whatever is inside of this div. So this cover will be on top of this div with all the items. Okay, and now that we have Z index, we're going to set its position to absolute. We have relative on the body, so it will sit, uh, sit absolutely within this body. It's not going to go outside of the body. This cover will sit inside of this body, absolutely. And we want it to be positioned top zero and right zero as well. Okay, and then we're going to add transition. So transition and to make position and to make sure that all other browsers are covered, make sure they use WebKit, Moss, MS, of Opera as well. Uh, otherwise, you can use just this transition uh, property, which works in all modern browsers. I'm going to set it to all, so all properties, and the time I want to set to 0 0.3 seconds. So whatever transition we are going to apply, whatever we are going to be doing with this element, it should happen within three milliseconds. Okay, and then after pseudo element, after this cover, so we've got this cover, and then the pseudo after inside of it will have content of this underscore. You may remember this blinking underscore. So this is where this underscore actually is coming from. So the content underscore and then display, I would like to display it as block and then animation I would like to make sure that this cursor is actually blinking. So what we are going to do, I'm going to keep this animation here, but before we type in anything, let's create this animation using CSS keyframes. So above our horizontal fit, I'm going to create keyframes and I'm going to call it blinking cursor. And here I'm going to start at 0%. So at 0%, I want to make sure that opacity of this blinking cursor is zero. Then at 50%, I would like opacity to be 100%, which is basically one. It's not 100%, it's just one. And then at 100%, I want it to go back to opacity zero. And what it does, at zero we have zero opacity, at 50 we have one opacity, at 100 we go back to zero opacity because 100, after 100 we straight away go to zero. So obviously we need to make sure that these both are matching. So we're going to have a blinking cursor at the same interval. Okay, so we have this blinking cursor keyframes. We can now scroll down to our covers after pseudo element and we want to apply this blinking cursor to its animation. So animation will be blinking cursor and we want it to run at 0 0.5 seconds, which is five milliseconds. And then we want to run it infinitely. So infinite. Without this infinite, it would only run once. And obviously it would be hidden because it starts with uh, opacity zero and it ends at opacity zero. So with infinite, it's going to start blinking all the time. Okay, if we now collapse this cover here, after this cover, I want to apply swapping class to our body. So if we are going to have swapping class associated with two piece, obviously, associated with our body element, so we have body plus swapping, then what we want to do, we want our cover to be displayed at 100% width. So width 100%. And then on the left hand side, to make sure that this after pseudo element doesn't just touch the header on the left, we want to make sure that we have some paddings there. So we're going to add some padding left and we're going to set it to 0.8 REM, which is the default padding. If we scroll up, you will see that the body and header has this sort of padding. Oh, there we go here. We've got 0.8 REM. So we want to make sure that this blinking cursor doesn't go closer to the header than the 0.8 REM on the left hand side. 